What's up everyone? Today we're going to continue talking about Azure Function Apps and we'll dive deeper into managed identities. We'll go over what exactly are managed identities and how you can use them to interact with other Azure services. My name is Jeff. This is Jeff Brown Tech. Let's go ahead and get started. To get started working with managed identities, we first need to go enable it inside of our Azure Function App. So out here under settings, let's go under identity. You just switch this to on and go ahead and save it. And it's just warning you that this is going to register your function app out in intra ID. Basically, it's going to look like another user account inside of your tenant. And the name of that user account will match whatever resource it is. In this case, it's our function app. Now, there are two different types of managed service identities. There is a system assigned one, which is associated only with the resource. If I were to delete this resource, this function app, it would also delete the identity. There's also user assigned managed identities where you create it just on its own and then you can assign it to multiple resources inside of your tenant. If you were to delete that resource, the user assigned managed identity would still exist. Typically, I've used just system assigned managed identities as and then they're just tied to the resource and that's all I've typically used them for. All right, now that we've got our managed identity created or enabled on our function app, let's go explore some PowerShell specific things for our function app. Under functions, let's go under app files. And in here, we'll change the drop down into our profile. Now, if you've worked with PowerShell in the past, you know you have a profile that loads every time you start up PowerShell. You can put specific you know, user settings in there that you like or just shortcuts or anything like that. Same thing applies here for our function app. We do show here this profile will run anytime you start the function app or if it's been deallocated due to inactivity and then it starts back up again. The thing I want to point out here is starting at line 14. So I'm going to highlight this here. Just a little if statement saying if the environment variable MI secret exists, then we're going to clean up our Azure context autosave and then connect out to our Azure tenant using the current identity, which is our managed service identity. What this is saying is if we have a managed service identity enabled on our function app or it determines that it exists, it automatically connects out to our Azure tenant in the current subscription where the function app lives. So this is super helpful. This means inside of your functions that you're writing, you don't have to log in or do anything like that. That is automatically taken care of inside of our profile here. Next, let's jump over to our requirements PSD1. Now, if you've been following along with what I've been doing in the other video, we created an order processing system. And as part of that, it created files out in a blob storage. I'm going to do the same thing using PowerShell commandlets from the AZ module. And I need to make sure that module is available inside of my function app here. Inside of the requirements file here is where you can specify modules that exist out in the PowerShell gallery and version restraints or anything like that and have them automatically downloaded and available inside your function app. Now it does have an example here on line seven of just downloading the entire AZ module. If you're familiar with that module, it includes lots of other sub modules. But for me, what I'm primarily just interested in is the az.storage module. So I'm gonna paste in here az.storage and I know the latest major version is version eight, and I'm just gonna allow any minor version that exists. And then you know the function app will download and update those modules as needed. For me, I just like to be very controlling or specific in what modules I'm downloading. I don't wanna download all of them, have a lot of extra modules or files inside my function app. Your mileage may vary though. All right, let's make sure we save this and have it available inside our function app. Now inside the example functions that we're going to take a look at here in just a second, I need to access that storage account, but I need to give this function app access to be able to do the things inside the storage account that I'm going to be coding. In order to do this, let's go over to our storage account and assign permissions for our function app on the storage account. All right, here we are in the storage account. We saw this earlier in other videos. Let's go over to access control. We are going to add a role assignment. And I want it to be able to create blobs inside of the storage account. We just search for blob. There are a couple of options here. It really doesn't need data owner, but we probably need data contributor. It can read, write, and delete files within the blob container. You could also always create your own specific uh, RBAC role that might limit it to even more things. But for right now, this should be good for our purposes. 
Next on the Members tab, we'll select Managed Identity and select Members. Then you'll select the subscription where the Managed Identity exists. And we have a couple of different options. You can select a user assigned managed identity or specifically system assigned ones. Let's go under function app. And I have two here. Let's look at our funk app demo WS2. So that's the one we've been working with. Go ahead and select it. We'll review and assign and assign this here. Perfect. Let's go take a look at what that looks like on our role assignments tab. If we scroll down, we can see our function app here as the blob data contributor role on our storage account. This means our function app should be able to do anything with blob data that we need to read, write, delete files. Perfect. So we should be good to go here. Let's jump back to our function app. Let's go back to overview. And I've got two examples I want to take a look at. I've already created all these and I've done through this in other videos, so I'm not going to keep going over that same thing over and over. Let's go into MSI example number one and let's take a look at the code. I'm just going to be passing in a customer ID and total in my JSON body for HTTP request. We're generating order number stuff we should be familiar with from our other video here. And then on this line right here, we're putting what text we're going to put inside of our file. Now what's different from using push output binding that we saw in our other examples is we didn't have to create the file ahead of time. We just said, you know, we're pushing this file out here. It auto generated the file and we just told it the content. But in this case, we need to create the file beforehand in order to copy it out there. Starting here on line 25, I'm creating a local file on the function app with the content here of our invoice that we are creating. And then we need to create a storage context so we know which storage account we're going to be working with. Now I've got one thing here. I forgot to go over this, but I'll show you later afterwards. I have an environment variable here called orders storage account. This is the, going to be the name of the storage account that I want to interact with. And I've saved it as an environment variable. This is just useful. If you ever change storage accounts, you only have to change it in one place. And your code is just referencing this environment variable. We'll have to go back and uh, fix this real quick before we run this. Next thing we're going to also then do is find all the existing containers because I want to create containers based on the customer ID. And then within that container, we'll have all the orders or invoices based on the order number. So we're going to double check that. We're going to get all of those existing containers and creating some blob parameters here or a hash table. We're going to double check to see if our container already exists. So if it doesn't, we will create the storage container based on the customer ID. And then we're going to run set AZ storage blob content, passing in our hash table here, which already has the file, the local file, and then the container that we are wanting to use with. One thing with containers and names and stuff inside of storage accounts, they, have, they all have to be lowercase. So that's why you see two lower here. And then we're just updating body saying we created it and pushing back out our HTTP response, just saying that it created it and it was okay. Again, lots of things here we could do, increase error handling, make sure it creates the container or the blob or anything like that. But we're just focused on interacting with managed identities here. All right, real quick, let's go back and let's fix my environment variable here. Let's go into environment variables. Now, just like we had this one with our storage account connection string that we were using with our push output binding, I'm going to create another environment variable. The name of it is going to match what we called it inside of our code there, orders storage account. And the value is going to be JPT orders demo WS2. That was the name of the storage account. Now make sure you always apply this and then click on apply again, and it will restart the function app if it needs to. All right, with our environment variable created, let's go back to our function here. Okay, I'm gonna expand back up our logs here. Let's go into test and run. I'm going to paste in our JSON body, it just has our customer ID and our total. Let's go ahead and run this and see if it works for us. Now, one of the things you see happening here in the background is the first managed uh, dependency download is in progress. So that's going and downloading our module from PowerShell Gallery for AZ Storage, 
because this is the first time we're running it. Then we can see it's automatically logging in to our tenant here. So that's again, something we didn't have to code that's being taken care of inside of our profile. It's loading the different modules. We can see it's generating the order number. And I think maybe the first time we run this, it might not work right away, kind of just hung up there. So this might take a second. We'll give it some time to think about it. Okay, what I went and headed did is closed out the test and run screen that was there and I came back and just ran it again. I think maybe that first time it's trying to run and load the modules and do all the things just kind of gets hung up and never quite finishes or does what it needs to do. But going back and running a second time, oh, it looks like it went through perfectly. We got our HTTP response and everything like that. So let's close this. And I just want to bring up our logs here and just again, walk through what we're taking a look at here. We can see that it automatically logged into the tenant here. So we didn't have to worry about that. Generated the order number, then went through and did some double checking to see if the container existed and it didn't. So it created it for us and then went and created the blob inside the storage account. So it looks like everything kind of went pretty good there. So let's switch over to our storage account and take a look at our file. Here I am out in the storage account. I've already got blob containers pulled up. If we do a quick refresh, we can see we now have a container based on the customer ID. If we go into here and take a look, and we now have a file name here based off the order ID that it generated. This is a little bit better than the last video where I just had to shove everything into the same container and use a random GUID as the file name. In this case, we now have containers based on the customer ID and the file names are the order numbers. What we're highlighting here is the push output binding is nice and it does a lot of things for us that we don't have to do. For example, if we get back into our storage account here, again, we went over this, but had to go through and make sure you know, we had to create the file locally. Then we had to see if the container existed or not and then do some more things here. This was a lot more code than what we just saw for push output binding, but it gives you more granularity, allows you to be more specific than what the push output binding could do for us. I have one more example I wanna take a look at here. Let's go ahead and close this out. And if we go into my second example here, now the first one used commandlets from the AZ storage account module. But in this case, another option that you can do is just interact directly with the API. So in this function, we're doing a lot of the same things. We're generating an order number, setting up our variables. We're defining a storage account name, which is coming from our environment variable and our container name, the blob name, local file name. We're creating the local file and everything. But in this case, we're going to make a call directly to the API instead of using PowerShell commandlets. In that case, what we need to do is we need to get an access token using our managed identity. And we're doing this here and creating a headers variable with that token in there. That's for authorization. And then again, here we're just creating a URI and then using invoke rest method to make a call directly out to the API. This is not using AZ storage module or anything like that, just interacting directly with the API. There is one thing we had to do here. There is a commandlet here, get AZ access token. I believe that's just in the AZ accounts module, which is already should already be included inside of the function app there. So should be good to go there. All right, so let's do another test and run here. Now, in this case, this code is missing the ability to double check and make sure that the container already exists. I'm just going to use the same customer ID, but we would need to add some code there to make sure the container existed beforehand. Again, we're just showing another example here. So let's go ahead and run this. Bring our logs back up. We got a 200 OK, and then file uploaded successfully to, and we have our storage account, our container, and our file name. That looks like everything looked perfect there. If we go back to our storage account, do a quick refresh, we should have a second file there. Perfect. So again, you don't even have to use native PowerShell commandlets if you don't want to download modules or anything like that. You can use that managed service identity, get a token for it, and then go interact just directly with the API. All right, so that does it for this video. Hopefully that gave you a couple ideas on how to use managed identities and the different way you can use it to interact. If you want to use PowerShell commandlets, if you're using PowerShell, it's great. If not, if you're using another language, you can just make direct API calls and interact with other Azure services. Thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.